Shalom, brothers and sisters. Uh, so shalom, fellow subscribers. I should say, no sisters on the fellow subscribers. So lock about that. All right, welcome to another episode of Swat Cut Sharpie 2 channel. Okay, as you should already know, I'm um, Priest Brother Tawabra Khan. I have reading for me in the background. Priest Marshawn. Khan. So um, a fellow subscriber had requested that I do a video on Genesis, the third chapter, and the 15th verse concerning the woman and the serpent. All right. Genesis, the third chapter in general, is a show but on its own. But the brother specified, okay, I guess he was kind of annoyed or teed off that he heard another Israelite man break down Genesis 3.15. And I guess the brother really didn't get understanding or he didn't want to get understanding based upon what he believed to be false in the scriptures concerning that particular man's breakdown. Which I've never seen a video, so I can't comment or speak on it. But um, obviously it will be something that will be against what Marshall and I bring out because the brother requested I do it because he mentioned that the video, the scriptures were broken down wrong. Okay, so therefore, well, I don't know if the brother subscriber of ours will agree with uh, what the spirit has showed me on this issue. Okay, but I'm going to make the attempt anyway. And as always, everything will be back up through the scriptures and through the precepts, okay, to give the understanding of such. All right, so... Nevertheless, without further delay, okay, let's just jump right into this, okay, keep the time short. Um, let's go into the book of Genesis, the third chapter, but instead of the 15th verse, um, I want to start at verse 14, okay, because um, this is something that I believe must be broken down first before we jump into verse 15. Yeah, brother, go ahead. And the Lord, thy power, said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this. Thou art cursed above all cattle, and above all every beast of the field, upon all thy belly shall thy go, and thus shall thy eat all the days of thy life. Right, so the Lord cursed the serpent by saying that uh, because he done this, and what he did was he um, deceived Eve to transgress against the Most High's commandment of not to bite off of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And, um, and Eve, in return, also um, supplanted Adam. Okay, and to follow after that transgression as well, like her, with the, the, the commandment of the serpent, which was to break the uh, law of the Most High at that time. The Lord had commanded Adam and Eve not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. <clears throat> Without me really going into what the tree of knowledge of good and evil is, because it's sort of irrelevant to the breakdown of verse 14 and 15, but if brothers would like for me to go more in depth with it, myself and Masha, you can email me on a separate note. And we'll be more than happy to do that through the Spirit of Most High, while Yahweh Shah Mashiach. But um, verse 14, the Most High is cursing the serpent. Okay, so to get the understanding, um, Genesis the third chapter speaks of it. Now, the serpent is Satan. Okay, the spiritual demon Satan had um, transfigured himself into the form of a serpent. Okay, and you're going to understand why I say this to what the Spirit has showed me. Okay, and the thing about it was is that once upon a time snakes were creatures that um man and woman would be able to um um deal with and play with and touch without it biting them back okay it wasn't looked upon as a ferocious horrific creature a poisonous creature at that nowadays serpents most of them or at least half of them are poisonous okay and can give some form of harm if you are bitten and serpents are really not um, they're not really, uh, they're not really approachable to, by man. Okay. They, they, they basically, there's no relationship between serpent and man. So the understanding is, is that the Lord has cursed a serpent. And when he cursed a serpent, meaning he made the serpent poisonous. Okay. So prior to Genesis, the third chapter, serpents were not poisonous. And I'm going to prove that in the scriptures. And the most I cursed the, the serpent, all right, and made the serpent to be poisonous. Okay, so like snakes, like rattlesnakes and cobras and things of that nature, serpents that have venomous or venom fangs that can paralyze somebody within 10 to 15 minutes if bitten, if they're not rushed and, and if they're not receive medical attention, they'll die within 10, 15 minutes of a snake bite. Okay, that's all curse. Okay, the most high put upon a serpent to be a symbol of death. Okay, upon men, because that's the, that's the creature that Satan chose to reveal himself in towards Eve in the garden. You understand? So read it again, Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. And the Lord thy power said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed 
above all cattle. Right. So the serpent was cursed above all cattle, meaning all beasts of the earth. Read. And above and above every beast of the field. Read. Upon thy belly shall thou go. Mm -hmm. And thus shall thou eat all the days of thy life. Right. So this is a twofold and symbolic with the word dust. All right. Dust also represents death. All right. When it says that dust should I eat all the days of thy life, meaning that the serpent would now become a symbol of death. To prove that the dust represents death, drop down to verse 19. Verse 19. And the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread. So this is a curse that came upon Adam, okay, or man in general through Adam, right? And the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread. Right, meaning that man will have to work for their food. Okay, and Adam would have to work and till the ground for his food as well. Read. Till thy return unto the ground. Meaning when he dies. Okay, read. For out of it was thou taken. Right. Like the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. All right, read. For dust thou art, and unto dust shall thy return. Right, so dust represents death. When it says dust shall not return, like a lot of the um, preachers or a lot of these priests when they're over coffins and they're singing they're saying their rights to a to a casket or a dead body before they lower into the ground and go ashes to ashes dust to dust well, that represents a symbol that's death okay death has come upon this individual so basically the serpent would now be considered to be an instrument of uh, a symbol of death now okay that's what the serpent would represent it represents death now okay and then it represents death before but now it represents death because dust also represents a form of death, all right? And basically the same way that by following after the philosophies of the serpent, um, even Adam caused death to come upon this earth. Likewise, basically by you getting too close to the serpent or playing them with serpents or become intermingled with serpents, likewise, death will come upon you if you get to understand it. Like the scripture says, flee from sin like as if you're fleeing from the face of a serpent. It tells you that in the Apocrypha. So go back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. And the Lord thy power said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Right. So another thing too is the serpent being representing as, when it says, Thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life, not only does it represent that the serpent would be an instrument of death, but it also represents that the serpent will be on a low level as a creature. You understand? Hold that. Give me on Micah chapter 7 verse 16. Okay, because licking dust represents defeat as well. You know what I'm saying? Which represents the fact that the matter is, is that the serpent would not be considered to be inferior, okay, to all beasts of the field. The animal itself the Lord is cursing. Because the Lord is not cursing Satan. Satan is doing his job, but the Lord made the example of what Satan did and he cursed the serpent, okay, to be an animal of death and a symbolic form of death. Read Micah um, chapter 7 verse 16. The nations shall see and be confounded. The Lord said the nations shall see and be confounded, read. At all their might. At all their might, okay, but I thought that the nations would be saved in Revelation 7 and 9, but that's a different topic, okay, but the Lord said the nations shall be confounded at all their might. Read. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Meaning the nations, basically they're not going to be talking shit anymore about the scriptures. They're not going to be talking shit about the, the children of Israel. They're not going to be calling us by bywords and proverbs anymore. Many more bywords and proverbs anymore. Okay. They're basically going to pay homage to us. Read. Their ears shall be deaf. The Lord said their ears shall be deaf. Okay. Read. They shall leak the dust. Like a serpent. The Lord said they shall lick the dust like what? Like a serpent. The Lord said they shall lick the dust like a serpent, which represents that they're going to be on a low level. Okay? So know the Gentiles not going to be equal to us. Okay? The Lord said they're going to lick the dust like the serpent. Okay? That's how the nature is going to be in the kingdom. They're going to be on a low level. Okay? They're going to be on a low level way beneath the children of Israel. They're going to be underneath our feet. Licking, our, licking the dust of our sandals, like it tells you in Isaiah 49. Read. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. See, that's so much for God. I love everybody. The Lord said the nations are going to remove, they're going to move out of their holes like worms of the earth. 
Because remember, when we read the scriptures, the Most High, when he brings judgment upon the nations, okay, they got fallout shelters. And they got, the Lord said they're going to hide themselves in the clefts of the rock, okay? And the Lord said that what? They're going to move out of their rock like worms of the earth. That's how the Lord thinks about the nations. He considers them like worms, okay? Read. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God. Right, they're going to be afraid of the Lord our God. Read. And shall fear because of thee. Right. So they're going to fear us because of the power of the Most High. You understand? So that's the reason why the Gentiles are going to want to cleave unto us because it's going to be out of fear. They're going to recognize that we're the sons of God and that the Lord is with us. So they're going to realize that the only way of their form of escaping the, the judgment that the Lord is going to bring upon this earth is by cleaving unto us as our servants. All right. And then when that day comes of God Almighty, we're going to utilize them to build up our bridges, our palaces, and we're going to use them to build up our kingdom on a physical carnal level. You understand? And they're going to be our servants and we're going to suck the milk of them, meaning that what? They're going to do everything we want them to do according to the law and righteousness. Okay. We're going to seek out men of continual employment, like I believe it tells you in Ezekiel the 39th chapter. All right, so any job that needs to be done, we're going to seek a Gentile or a stranger to do it, just like it was during the days of David and Solomon. You understand? So let's go back to Genesis. Okay, matter of fact, um, yeah, get Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because I have done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. Right, so the Lord said that the serpent is cursed above all cattle. All right, so you can't offer a serpent on an offering, okay? So it's cursed. Because, like, you could take cattle. Okay, and you could put it on the altar as an offering unto the Most High, but you can't do that to a serpent, all right? Because why the Lord said he cursed the serpent above all cattle, right? And above every beast of the field. And every beast of the field that the Lord created, the serpent is on a lower level then, okay? Read. Upon thy belly shall I go. Read. And dust shall I eat all the days of thy life. Right, because when you look at a serpent, a serpent is like a, 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 a like a worm with a four, a big worm with a forked tongue. The way they move on their bellies, all right? That's the Lord cursing the serpent. No other animal does that, man. Okay, moving on their bellies. These reptiles and snakes, the Lord cursed them to have that, to be known for that type of vibration and movement on the earth, man. They're like a low-level, slittery, disgusting creature that nobody wants to be amongst or around. And they're very poisonous. So that's the curse the Lord put upon the serpent because Satan chose the serpent as um as the animal that he transfigured himself into in the garden all right to deceive adam and eve and since adam and eve thought it nothing to be amongst the serpent and the reason why the serpent was able to deceive him through the spirit of satan now the serpent is cursed now to the point where the most high has put a spirit on man not to be amongst a serpent anymore okay so that's like a symbolical curse all right, to, from the times of Adam and Eve that no one really wants to be amongst a serpent. You understand? Because of the nature that it holds. Hold that. Give me Psalms 140 verse 1. To further prove that. All right. Let's get the book of Psalms, the 140th chapter. Okay, in the first verse. Because I know men used to break this down like it's talking about Esau, but it's not talking about Esau. Because even men that I came up under in this truth at one point, was teaching I saw my Esau in the Caucasus. You understand? But it doesn't make much sense. When you had Edomites spread all over Europe as our serfs, and you only had a small fraction of them that was in the Caucasus at that time period. It doesn't make any sense to what the Lord is saying about the serpent. He's talking about the actual animal being cursed, and we're going to further prove that. Give me Psalm chapter 140, verse 1. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. The Lord said, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Mean a man that's possessed with Satan. Read. Preserve me from the violent man. The violent and evil man, meaning a man that's not of the most high, read. Which imagine mischief in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war. Right, which is the nature of an evil and violent man, read. Verse 3, they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. The Lord said they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. So David is comparing an evil and violent man to a serpent. So that was a curse that the Lord put upon the serpent for it to be a symbolic a symbolic meaning of death and a symbolic meaning of evil and symbolic meaning of violence. Read. Adder's poison is under their lips. Right, and adder is a, a adder is a poisonous snake. Okay, the Lord said, uh, David said that an adder 
And Adam's poison is under their lips, meaning what they say will harm you, which is the same thing when it came to Satan, 